available. What do we make of the purchase price? So for VMware, it's, you know, a nice premium to where it's trading. You mentioned it's $61 billion. Maybe if there wasn't a tech sell-off, it would be a little higher, but shareholders seem to like it on both sides of the transaction, and it definitely values the company higher than where we, before, you know, we reported on the potential sale. It's a premium to that unaffected price. Uh, so, and we, there's a debt component to this, right? Sure. And they've got that lined up already? So it's a $32 billion yeah. debt package. It's actually Actually, the biggest debt package in over a year. Right. So it's it's a pretty well, big one for the. Well, banks. that's what I'm curious because I mean, there's going to be an appetite for that. I mean, everyone's been talking about how tough this market is, how nobody wants to buy this kind of stuff. But I mean, I assume if they lined up 32 billion, they're pretty confident that they could sell that. They're pretty confident, but they won't have to sell it probably for another year because the uh, banks won't have to syndicate it until the deal closes. And with all the regulatory reviews around the world, we're hearing it could take a year to close. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily a comment on where the debt markets are right now, but where maybe they'll be if they improve in a year. Leona, let's talk about the cash component of this because we know, of course, a lot of these tech names in particular, but the broader S&P 500 companies have a lot of cash on their balance sheets. We were kind of expecting this M&A boom. Uh, Activision, for example, that deal earlier coming in an all-cash deal. Is this a trend, is this the beginning of a trend that we should be aware of? This is definitely a trend we're seeing, and tech M&A has been very hot this year. I think it's over 50% on last year's totals. But Broadcom has been doing this for a long time before it was trendy. They've grown by acquisition. Avago actually bought Broadcom and renamed itself Broadcom back in 2015. So Hawk Tan, the CEO, just loves deals, and this <laughs> is his biggest one yet. Yeah, he was certainly saying that they were, had the capacity to do it and, and watch out. I mean, let's talk a little bit about any regulatory hurdles and whether that you see any it's going to take a long time to sign off but in general these are two sort of companies that aren't going to have any competitive they, base, right? they do have some overlap and in Washington big tech is being scrutinized and mm. you could argue that Broadcom is now considered big tech I mean it's market caps over 200 billion but we're watching the China review there's some China angle that that one could be lengthy and you really never know what could happen what, what was the deal before that fell apart with Broadcom where they ran into all the issues sure so Broadcom yeah. tried to buy Qualcomm right and at the time Broadcom was domiciled in Singapore right. and Qualcomm didn't want to sell and the White House got involved but this time around they're trying to do everything by the book you know that was a hostile offer whereas this one of VMware is very friendly Silver Lake a private equity firm knows both companies well so we're hearing that there's nothing strange like a hostile offer All right.